wonderful, I had a wonderful childhood full of people, <laughs> extended families. And um, um, before Bryce mentioned that I'm a, a Muggerum, a Woodathi and a Bindaljuru woman, they're from the regions of sort of Sherbergs, Hounsville, um, the Torres Strait and Cape York. And I often joke that, you know, I'm actually that makes me pretty much related to every Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person in, in Queensland. And it's kind of true um, because there's not many clans really when you think about it you know, from the past. Um, but a lot of those family groups and that extended family groups, they were always around us. We were in our community. There was always big family gatherings at our house. My father was a fisherman. My grandfather was a pearl diver. And my father would go out and catch turtle and we'd share it with everyone or a dugong. And then we'd have these big gatherings. And um, as a child, when I was growing up, actually, I moved around a lot in housing. It seemed to be um, some, a part of my lifestyle, I suppose. And I think I coveted uh, the need for uh, stability. Um, for example, I went to seven schools in seven years when I was a child in primary school. And, and that's why I've, I think I've always had a passion for property and that's kind of driven me through what I've done. Um, and I always had a goal um, to have my own house. And I, and, and I know that a lot of the time I wasn't necessarily managing my money well. While I was at uni, it was fine because I had a lot of work to do and I actually saved money. But um, when I got out of uni and I started working and you know going out and all that sort of getting more income, um, I always had a budget, but I didn't necessarily save in that budget. But I did re know for sure that I wanted to, to get into my own property. Um, I didn't quite make it. Um, I think that as Indigenous people, it maybe, you know, we know that for most Australians, I think that um, having a home is the foundation for everything in your life, isn't it? It's where you find security. It's where you find stability for children to go to school. It's where you base your employment from. Um, it's also something that's in, intergenerational, right, uh, that you pass that wealth on to your children and your children's children. And, and um, you know, as Indigenous people, we I don't know if most Australians know this, but we haven't actually been able to own, own homes like others. And that's part of that exclusion, I think, that I'm trying to encourage now because we've got a lot of catching up to do, right? So until, you know, there's... The, the dates might differ, but until for many Indigenous people, they weren't allowed to own, they were literally not allowed to own a home until after 1967, particularly if you were under the control of the, the mission system or the governments. And so, you know, that isn't very long for us to be able to get into it, which is why we're lagging behind most Australians in terms of home own ownership rates. And um, one of the things that I realised was I didn't have a lot of knowledge about it. And you asked me about my mentors. I didn't really have a, a particular mentor, I suppose, because nobody in the family owned houses. I think one of my aunts did, actually. Um, she'd been a government employee. But what I did was I just devoured everything that I could possibly find about it. I thought, if I'm going to do well in this and if I consider myself to be, you know, someone who's, who's got the smarts to succeed in life and I've succeeded in other areas. And I thought, well, then why am I not doing very well with my finances? And so what by focusing on it and by giving it the time and the attention and making space in my life for it, I, you know, I got to save that deposit and I learned a lot. And, but, and then one of the things that I also learned was that when you're buying property, you should build a team, right? So, you know, your legal team, you find your your mentor team, you find your mortgage broker as well. So that's what I did. Um, but I suppose I did that a bit later. When, with the, the boy that I met, I bought a property in 2005 mm. and then we decided we needed a sea change. We went down to Austinmere and we bought a house there um, and we renovated. And what we'd done both times was we renovated both and so we, you know, added value to those and enabled us to buy the next big thing. Um, in Austria and we had a baby and um, unfortunately that relationship sort of ended but because of that and we had property I was on my own with my with my child and with my daughter and um, and I decided then that I needed one for us as well because that's always what, I, what I'd always wanted and so we had and I had because of the proceeds of the previous sale went and bought another one in Greenwich which is by the water again which was really lucky because I seemed to be quite lucky. I mean, in the first two properties, we were riding a wave. You know, property was 
was really increasing in value really fast. And if he didn't get in, it was really difficult to get in after that. And so I was lucky to have gotten in. And in some ways, you know, being with my partner helped that in the in the initial beginnings. Um, but after buying the property in Greenwich, I realised that, you know, it had capitalised heaps, it, like the, the growth in it was phenomenal, um, by 60% plus. Mm -hmm. Being someone who was not from the sort of family wealth or any other kind of wealth, I thought, I'm going to capitalise on this. So I took it and then I reinvested. I went and bought a, a small property in Balmain and um, and I've still got that um, property in Balmain um, today, which has, has done really well as well. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, you know, I, I still feel like I'm a person who's teetering on the edge of, you know, going shopping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. I need to have constraints around me and processes. And for me, property was also about saving. Mm. Um, for saving vehicle, yeah. It is, it's for savings and it's useful, you know, it's really necessary. So that's why I did it because I knew that if I didn't do it, I would fritter it away. So what I did do this, when I, to get a deposit, I worked hard. I worked really hard at times and I had as many jobs as I could have. I, I worked in full-time jobs and I did consultancies on the side and that's how I got to the point. And, um, you know, a few other bonuses, like one of the things I never used to do was take uh, holidays when I was working often. So and if I did take holidays, I'd work again. And that's how I um, was able to get deposits together. And, you know, with, when my partner came along, that made it able for us to buy something mm. um, bigger. But you did it. You did it. An incredibly important thing, Nancy. Whether you consciously or subconsciously knew what you were doing, and and I want to talk to that in a separation that that when that relationship broke down, and you got the proceeds of that relationship, you put it into property. Um, there are too many people um, in this country who uh, potentially get a, a windfall um, and don't know what to do with it now, and they go and rent. And then all of a sudden they get into a cycle of renting. And then by making that critical decision that you made in terms of uh, making sure that you had a home ownership um, for you and your daughter um, was, was absolutely fundamental because, as you said, uh, you got that appreciation of that value and that has allowed you to continue to keep building your wealth out. So I think that's a, a really important message not only to the Indigenous people and First Nations people, it's it's also a critically important thing to all of our listeners um, because we do know through this COVID-19 period that um, separations and, and that are on the increase. Um, and so getting the right advice um, if you're going through difficult times around what you do with that money after you are um, financially separated um, is really important. Yeah. Um, I think... The other thing that I, I had recognised from some of the research that I did, I'd re realised what makes a good purchase. And I so I don't necessarily think there was an accident that I've done well. Um, I picked really good areas. Um, yeah, you did. You know, yeah. location, location, location. I think I recognised that. Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Working at LJ Hooker. You know, that that's a kind of a higher-end sort of suburb in Queensland around St Lucia. Um, and you know, Clovelly, Austin Mayor, Greenwich and Balmain. They're all mm. amazing suburbs and desirable suburbs to live in is to use your terms. And, you know, I found it really scary too, to be honest, when I did it, but I sort of sort of felt the fear and did it anyhow. Mm. Um, the key goal for me was always to take my finances out of my life as a stressor. Mm -hmm. um, because there's significant other pressures that you face in this life. And that was one of them for me. Um, and also to see myself into retirement uh, well um, and, and independent, really, without having to you know, rely perhaps on the pension. And so, you know, I don't think it's something you can approach, you know, in a, in a half-hearted way, certainly. I sort of really took it on with gusto and I think that if you if that's what you want then you need to have that personal drive to get there and then to find like I said before the right people to help you get there um I don't think it's for everyone either I'm not trying to say that you know everybody or needs to be in their own home ownership if it, you know if because many indigenous people have their own country I certainly have too um for my my peoples um but if it's in, if you're in a position to do that, and if it 
you know, will save that stress, and we know that we have lots of stresses on us, particularly as Indigenous people, then it's, you know, for me, it was something that really helped to alleviate that stress and to know that, you know, in my, you know, my, my older years, I'm going to be okay, yeah? That's one of my goals, um, and that's all the goal has ever been, really, to be able to, to get there and to be comfortable and have a, you know, a contented retirement, hopefully, um, which I, hopefully I'm on track to do. 